Hello YouTube, we're um, in the process of running wires and outlets throughout the bus. Uh, we kind of had a little bit planned before we actually started running wires when we were framing it out. Um, we took into consideration where we want the wires to go and we also planned for having all our power source up front there, solar uh, transfer switch to shore power and generator. So we knew where the power source was coming from. So when we framed this out, we made it so all the wires can run down through these channels. So this worked out pretty well when it actually came to wiring up the outlets. Because this wire is just sitting in this channel here, we ran them down out the box here, and usually you'd have to run extra wire out and cut it, wire up your outlet, and then kind of like fold the wires into that small box. But this way, they're sitting here, we can pull them out, Pull the wires out, plenty of room to work with. Then when we're done, pull it up, set the wires back in the channel. We don't have to worry about bunching wires up in that box at all, really. Because these boxes are also really thin to begin with. We got these like thin profile electrical boxes, so they fit perfectly in between here. We don't want to take up a bunch of space with the walls, so this all worked out pretty well. But before we even started running any wire or outlets, there's all different size wire and outlets with different amp ratings. So we haven't we went and got an idea of what our layout's gonna be, where the kitchen's going, where the bathroom and the bedroom. And then we made up a list of all the power usage we'll be using in here, all the electronics and appliances and stuff like that. Most electronics they have, like if you look on it, it'll say the rating, like uh it'll be 120 volts and it'll draw 10 amps. Over right here we have a sander down here, 120 volts. This draws 7 amps. But um, if you don't have any of this on you, you're trying to just plan, you don't have it yet, you can just Google search uh, power usage of specific thing you're looking for. It's a kilowatt meter. Um, it's great to have. It's cheap. It's like 20 bucks or something, but you can plug whatever you want into this and then plug it into an outlet that has power and it'll tell you the volts, amps, watts, hertz. And this kilowatt button here is for like, if you want to plug a fridge in and leave it run for a few days, you can come back and see how much it drew over that period of time. So there's different size circuits. Um, usually in a house, like wall outlets and stuff, usually will range from like 15, 20 to 30 amp circuits so when we went through here and figured out what everything's going to draw like uh the lights aren't drawing too much if we have all of our lights on at once it's only one and a half amps stuff like toaster coffee maker blow dryer things that create heat they draw a little more and all this stuff that's going to be on our kitchen driver's side of the bus blow dryer will be used driver's side of the bus in the back where the bedroom will be so how we kind of figured out our circuit is we probably won't run all three of these at once but likely we'll run two at a time so say we want to run the toaster and the coffee maker and each of them are drawing 10 amps that'll add up to 20 amps so we decided to use a 20 amp circuit on the driver's side of the bus so this just helps us size up the wire we need for that circuit we want a 20 amp circuit we're going to go with 12 gauge here rated at 20 amps 15 amp, that would be 14 gauge wire, 30 amp, 10 gauge wire, and here's some different wire. This is 14 gauge wire, this is 12 gauge wire, that's 10 gauge wire. If you look on the wire, it'll say what gauge it is, like right here, it says 12 2, it means 12 gauge 2 wire. There's three wires in here, but the middle one is just the ground, you'll have a hot and common in there. On the passenger side, we're not going to be drawing too much. Uh, the most is the fridge, that's going to be plugged in most of the time. That's only going to draw like one to two amps. And then we'll just have other outlets there to run random stuff like phone chargers, computer chargers, like small electronics that don't draw too much. So the passenger side, we decided to go with a 15 amp circuit. And then the air conditioner, we're going to put on its own circuit. I'm not exactly sure how much it draws. I just Google this like a common RV rooftop air conditioner um, power usage and it gave me this I'm just going off that 
but uh, so we start off there with the compressor, it kicks on and it draws a little more. Um, so we have 25 amps on startup. It's actually running. The amperage is down about half of that. But just to be safe, we got a 10 gauge wire that can handle 30 amps. So this is what our circuit's going to look like. This is the power in, solar, the short power, generator, all that will come in. And it'll come down through these breakers in the breaker panel. We'll have a 20 amp breaker with 12 gauge wire coming out that can handle 20 amps. And we have 20 amp outlets all on the driver's side of the bus. Right here, 15 amp breaker using 14 gauge wire that can handle 15 amps and 15 amp outlets all on the passenger side of the bus. Then we'll have our 30 amp breaker, 10 gauge wire that can handle 30 amps and that's gonna go to our AC. And these are just the LED lights. Like I said, they don't draw too much so we'll just splice them into one of these breakers. So it's easier and safer just to match up all your amperage between the breaker, the wire, and the outlets. When you're picking out outlets, it'll tell you the amp rating. Like we got, this one came in a box, it says 20 amp right there. Uh, sometimes it'll come in a box. Um, it'll usually say when you go to buy it from the bin, but you wanna be sure it says it right on the outlet too. You probably can't read that, but if you look on the outlet, it'll say the amp rating somewhere on there. Then when we go to actually wire this up, when I wire these up, you can see one of these slots is bigger than the other one. The bigger one is um, what the white wire or the common goes to. The smaller one, the black wire. And then you have your ground down here. That'll be the bare wire or the green wire. And there's two screws on each side. That's just for if you want to run the circuit in and continue the circuit out. You just wire it up to the other contact there. We're also going to have a 12 volt system here. So we're going to run wires down for our diesel air heater, which is 12 volts. It'll draw 2 to 12 amps and our water pump 7 amps. We're going to use 14 gauge wire just because we have a bunch of it. So I'll run wire down to the diesel air heater and then run wire down to the water pump. That way 14 gauge wire can handle 15 amps. So it'll be fine running with that and fine running with this obviously. It's only 7 amps. And then we'll put a fuse in here, 15 amp fuse. When we ran these lines, we just made sure that there wasn't any like jagged metal that could puncture the wires. Make sure it has some room in here to move around. Um, try not to put any hard bends in there. So that's about it for the electrical system. Well, at least running wires and putting outlets in for now. Uh, get that all out of the way so we can get these walls up. Keep the wires hidden. We also want to make it so this part of the wall can pop off so I can get in here and these wires if I need to in the future. And yeah, I guess that's about it for this right now.